Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, and thank you so much for joining me today. We are discussing the Buk Missile System. Now I always want to call it the Buck Missile System, I don't know why my brain always relates back to that word, but it does. And of course this system does have some controversy behind it, but we're going to go over the sort of origins of how Russian and Soviet missiles came to be, and the historical impact of Soviet surface-to-air missiles is really unparalleled among produced missiles across the world. Initially designed as a defense against American bomber fleets in the early Cold War, they played a pivotal role in altering events such as the downing of the American U-2 reconnaissance aircraft over Russia and Cuba. These missiles supplied by the Soviets accounted for the destruction of around 100 American aircraft after, you know, the Vietnam War and significantly shaped the terms of air battles of today. In 1973, a new generation of missile proved to be a technological surprise inflicting considerable damage on Israeli aircraft. Even today, Russian surface air missiles are a primary defense against American bombers for many countries, and manned portable anti-aircraft missiles from Russia pose a significant threat in the realm of even terrorist attacks. Before the fall of the Soviet Union, public knowledge of Russian missiles was actually quite limited to the designations assigned by Western military sources and of course names. Since the 1990s, the real designations and true technical details of these missiles have been relatively known for public knowledge, revealing previously undisclosed information about missiles that never reached production. The overview that I'm going to talk about for the Buck system gives a little bit of detail about its specific usage and the systems it has, but there are many failed projects out there from the Russian and Soviet bloc era that didn't go so well, whereas Buck has actually succeeded very well in its history. So where did the early missiles from Russia and the Soviet Union come from? Well, Sergei Korolev initiated early experiments with surface-to-air missiles before World War II, but his imprisonment unfortunately halted further progress. During the war, the Red Army experimented with the use of Katushka rockets as an anti-aircraft barrage weapon, which, as you can probably tell, was not very effective. After the victory in Europe, Stalin ordered the production of German surface-to-air missiles, teams led by Zelenskov. <laughs> I'm not going to try and say that again, uh, created things like the R101, R108, R109. There was the Rashkov with the R102s, R112s, and the R117s, and Kostin, which was the R103 and R110. And of course, there was lots of different developments of liquid engine technology from the German originals. Within four years, missiles were in flight testing, but it was discovered that the Germans had not solved the guidance problem. Stalin then ordered his secret police chief, Beria, to conduct a ruthless crash program to address the defense of Moscow against American bombers. Beria's son, in an existing missile design bureau headed by Kalsensko, uh, actually set up massive priorities to be established, and Russian and German engineer prisoners were actually exploited to do so. The KB-1 Bureau developed the S-25 air defense system in record time. By 1953, two years from the start, tests were being conducted against crude copies of B-29 bombers, and operational sites around Moscow had been established. The first production Soviet missile was known to the West as the SA-1 Guild. After Stalin's death, surface-to-air missile development returned to a more standard Soviet practice. They removed from the old posts, some of the original designers, and designated to prepare for the next generation of missiles. The design and development of most missiles used in the air defense systems over the following 40 years were led by Pavel Dmitryt Grushkin, later known as Fakal MKB. Beginning with his 32B alternate to the S-25, Grushkin developed a series of missiles that posed challenges to American and Israeli pilots during the Cold War. At the time of Grushkin's death on November 29, 1993, MKB Fakabal had produced over 16 basic types of surface-to-air missiles, 30 modernizations of these basic versions, and exported missiles to over 50 countries. Different firms developed overall anti-aircraft and anti-ballistic systems separate from the missiles integrated into those systems. This meant that the air defense systems developed by different bureaus could use the same missile. For the development of man portable and small vehicle mounted air defense systems though, traditional army integrators entered the missile development system in the 1960s, and it was almost like a free for all. But the one missile system that has always peaked in controversy and in intrigue in the modern anti-aircraft world is that of the Buk Mobile Radar Guided Surface to Air Missile or SAM Missile System. With four main components, acquisition and targeting radar, command element, missile launcher and logistic element, all mounted on tracked vehicles, this system has been a very credible threat to NATO aircraft for quite some time. The integrated system configuration allows the weapon platform to maintain mobility and relocate alongside other armies or battle groups in the area, rendering targets more challenging to detect compared to stationary SAM systems. And this was the basic principle of the Buk. It needed to be mobile and move quickly with all of its ancillary equipment around it. 
The acquisition radar component with varying capabilities in different versions enables the system to identify, track and target between selected objectives very quickly. The command component is designed to distinguish between friendly military aircraft and enemy aircraft, prioritizing multiple targets and relay the radar aiming information to the missile launchers. Unfortunately, as we are aware, significant escapes have occurred with this system and mistakes resulting in the unintentional downing of a civilian airliner. Now, there's a lot of politics and controversy behind that. We're not clearly going to get into that. But of course, um, you know, condolences to those lost in that incident. Uh, very sad um, when I saw that happening. You know, there's a lot of questions being asked to me about when I'm going to do a video about it. Clearly, I was not going to do it during that time. I think it's been long enough that I can actually talk about this weapon system. But uh, of course, very, very sad situation there. Now, the Buk, known as the Buna or Wood in Russian, represents a legacy self-propelled medium-range surface-to-air missile system developed by the Soviet Union and its successor state, the Russian Federation. The primary purpose, though, was to counter cruise missiles initially and smart bombs, fixed and rotary wing aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles as of today. Positioned with the Russians' A2AD network, the Buk occupies a strategic position between the S-200, 300, 400 systems above and beyond the point of defense of Thor and Pantier type systems. A standard Buk battalion comprises of a command vehicle, a target acquisition radar or a TAR, and six other vehicles specifically a transporter erector launcher, a radar known as the TELAR, and three transporter erector launchers or TAL vehicles. The Buk missile battery consists of two TELARs, each carrying four missiles, and one TELAR vehicle, or TLR vehicle, accommodating a total of six missiles to complete the arsenal of 14 missiles in total. The Buk system succeeds the NIIP Vumpel 2K12 Kubo, or NATO reporting designation as the SA6 Gainful. The initial version designated the 9K37 Buk was known as the West as the Gadfly, with the US Department of Defense DoD assigning the designation SA-11. Subsequent versions of the Buk of the M-12 and the Buk M-2 received the new NATO reporting designation as Grizzly and the DoD designation as SA-17. The latest iteration of the Buk M-3 has been in production since 2013 and is currently in active service designated as the SA-27. Early Buk systems utilized a day radar tracking system, the 9SH-38, similar to those in the Cub, the Tor and the Osa missile systems. However, modern designs have integrated thermal cameras with laser rangefinders for optical tracking, allowing for passive tracking. The 9K37 system can use the same 1S91 straight flash continuous wave radar as the 3M9 Cub system. The original Buk Telar 9S35 radar employs mechanical scanning of the case grain antenna reflector, while the Buk M2 Telar design uses the PSSA for tracking a missile guidance. The 9K37 utilizes the 9S18 tube arm or the 9S18M1 NATO reporting designation as Snowdrift as a target acquisition radar in combination with the 9S35 or 9S35M1 fire dome. The Snowdrift target acquisition radar has a maximum detection range of about 85 kilometers or 53 miles, allowing it to detect aircraft flying at 100 meters or 330 feet from 35 kilometers or 22 miles away. The TEL loading vehicle for the Buk artillery is similar to the Telar but is equipped with a crane for loading missiles instead of a radar. While it can fire missiles directly, it requires the cooperation of a fire dome equipped Telar to guide the missiles. The reloading vehicle can transfer the missile to the Telar in about 13 minutes and reload to a store in again another 15 minutes. Additionally, the Buk M2 introduced a new vehicle similar to the Telar, but with a radar mounted on a telescopic lift and no missiles, named the target acquisition radar TAR 9S36. This vehicle can be used with two TEL 9A316s to engage up to four targets and guide missiles into woodlands and hills that have undulating terrain, which is of course very critical across the Cold War era of missile platforms because they wanted to utilize the ground without having to, you know, I guess obscure your vehicle in the wood line and in the hills and in a flat open prairie. The OG Buk M1 or Buk M12 missile system employs a computer information system that records all crew actions in a quote, black box allowing for an objective assessment of crew actions and results. All vehicles in the systems use argon gas. 
the 115A computer is similar to the first Soviet airborne digital computer design in 1972 by Zaslon Radar. The Buk M2, or Buk M2E, the modernized version missile system, was a vehicle that uses slightly upgraded versions of the Argon A15K processor. This is also employed in military systems such as the Kushan and the Sova for anti-submarine defense and airborne radar for MiG fighter jets known as the MiG-31 and MiG-33, as well as mobile tactical missile systems for the Toshka, Oka and Volga. Currently Argons are ongoing upgrades with the NIIP's Baguette series processors, not baguette as in French baguette, as in just B-A-G-E-T. The missile launcher component boasts versatility capable of carrying various missiles and engaging multiple targets simultaneously. Logistics components play a vital role by transporting additional missiles and providing essential supplies and parts for both systems and operators. In a broad sense, the system identifies potential targets, selects specific ones that are prioritized, and launches the missiles at them to achieve objectives and replenish the system quickly. Autonomously, most of the time this works, but of course with older technology, it has its flaws. For effective missile guidance, a radar lock is essential, initiating the missile's trajectory toward the target until the onboard radar system executes the final course corrections. The missile's onboard proximity fuse then determines the optimal moment for detonation, creating a widespread fragmentation pattern of the missile components and the warheads, intercepting and destroying the target. Proximity fuses significantly enhance the probability of kill, particularly for missiles and targets with closing velocities exceeding 3,000 km an hour or 1,900 miles per hour or 900 meters per second or 3,000 feet per second and above. Alternatively, a command component may remotely trigger the missile's destination or an onboard contact fuse may activate the warhead. Top tier radars exhibit remarkable target detection capabilities with this platform, spotting targets as low as 30 meters or 98 feet of up to distances of 140 kilometers or 87 miles. And this is contingent upon the size and clear line of sight without intervening terrain. The most advanced missiles this system can demonstrate with is the ability to strike targets of altitudes surpassing 24,000 meters or 79,000 feet within a range of 50 kilometers or 31 miles. Since the inception of the Buk system in the 1970s, the functionalities of its components have undergone evolution, resulting in various different systems and nicknames for the components and variations. Furthermore, the adaptability of the Buk extends to the utilization of naval vessels. The Buk system deploys multiple missile variants, each tailored to a specific operational requirement during its time and service. The Naim M317 missile serves as the universal projectile for both Russian ground forces for air defense, utilizing the Buk M12 and the Russian Navy shipboard PVO. With an exterior reminiscent of the Vimpel R37 air to air missile, the 9M317 is a versatile, multifunction missile capable of engaging aerodynamic, ballistic, surface, and radio contrast targets on land and sea. Its applications cover tactical ballistic missiles, strategic cruise missiles, anti ship missiles, tactical and strategic aircraft, as well as helicopters. The next missile is the 9M38, which adopts a single stage X wing design without detachable components. Bearing a resemblance to the American Tartar and standard surface to air missile series, its design adheres to the stringent naval dimension constraints, allowing for the adaptation to the Soviet Navy's M22 SAM system. It measures about 5,550 millimeters or 219 inches in length, weighing about 690 kilograms or 1,520 pounds, and is equipped with a substantial 60 kilogram or 150 pound warhead operated by a proximity radar fuse. The 9M38 employs proportional navigation as its chosen homing method. Modern versions in development include the 9M317M and the 9M317ME, an active radar homing missiles. The primary developer is the NIIP and they've reported successful testing of these missiles in 2005 and have implemented them significantly through time. It has been designated with a range of up to 50 kilometers or 31 miles and a maximum altitude of around 25 kilometers or 82,000 feet and a maximum target speed of approximately Mach 4. There's not much this missile is not going to try and engage. The next and final missile is the 9K317M for the book M3. This is the modernized system that stands the latest production version incorporating new hardware with 36 target channels and advanced electronic components. Key specifications include a maximum target speed of 3,000 meters a second or 11,000 kilometers an hour or 6,700 miles per hour at Mach 8.8. It does have an altitude range of up to 35 kilometers or 114,829 feet and a distance range of 2.5 kilometers to 70 kilometers 
which is about 1.6 miles to 71.5 miles. This missile is highly maneuverable and is engineered to counter air, ground and sea targets, offering increased efficiency against electronic countermeasures and manipulative targets. The system is claimed to have the capability to destroy the MGM-140 ATACMS or ATACMS, although this hasn't really actually been attempted or proved. Radar guidance and target detection operates within a plus 60 degree range of the 9S36 system, detecting targets at various altitudes and ranges, and once again working as a utilized battery network of multiple launchers and radar systems. Overall guys, this thing is incredibly good at knocking out fast, high altitude aircraft, and unfortunately due to the nature of that capability, it has had some mistakes of course with that civilian airliner, but overall, the Buk missile platform is very prominent and still capitalized across the world by multiple militaries today. You do not want to be a fighter pilot coming across this system scanning you as a SAM. I'd be pretty nervous knowing that you're going into a contended airspace with Buk M3s or any Buk system that are scanning the airwaves or radar capabilities for you and your flight. Um, but let's be honest here, it is a aging bit of equipment, although being upgraded, it's certainly not the most high tech and sophisticated platform out there, but a certainly formidable platform that you do not want to be going against. I would love to hear your opinion on this missile system, folks. Please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below. If I've made any mistakes, once again, I'd love it if you could correct me and let me know what I've done wrong or what I've said wrong. Uh, and of course, I'd love to uh, get you to go to my social media pages, all that good stuff. Check out my links in the description box below. We've got all sorts of things going on there, including Facebook, Instagram, and my clothing brand that I sponsor, which is Attire for Effect. Of course, thanks to everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon and PayPal. And if you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, of course, click that subscribe button and that bell button so you can be notified when I'm producing more content. Finally, please hit that like button. It really does help the channel. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.